Welcome to this episode of Kyber Clips. I'm Mike Jafrida, President of Kyber Security, joined by Bob Thomas, BCIO, VCIS of Kyber and our clients. Welcome, Bob. Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Um, going to talk a little today about multi-factor authentication. Uh, What's that? <laughs> some <laughs> crazy thing. Um, never heard of it. Uh, there's been a lot of buzz around the effectiveness of multi-factor, and I think there's just been a lot of generalizations about what it is, how it is, how it works, what's good, not what's not good, and I thought we could just explore some of that today. So, is is MFA a thing of the past? People are saying it's no good anymore. Hackers can get past it. Sophisticated hackers have figured out ways around it, but it typically requires some help in order to get past it. You know, if you're talking about truly duping cell phones in order to get somebody's information directed to you instead of to them, you've got to have pretty much have to have somebody on the inside helping you from a cellular carrier. You know, it, it's just not, nobody's walking around scanning SIM cards and, and putting them in their phone. It's not that easy. And, um, Unless you're in Europe. I think it is probably somewhat easier over there to hack, uh, but I think that's really still a reach. Out of every client we've ever had, one that we picked up because he was breached, reached out to us, we helped him. Turns out his SIM card was duped and his cell phone was duped. He had multi-factor turned on and they were able to breach his account. It's the only time out of any client, any user, any client we have that I've heard of it actually happening that way. Um, it's just too hard. Um, people have figured out other ways by sending phishing emails, spear phishing emails, s redirecting people to a specific website that's not really a website but a lookalike to Microsoft's login site. They will capture your credentials as you're keying them in because they have control of that website. And immediately it will send the code and they'll catch the people putting the code in. They'll take that code and immediately put it into Office 365. Right. Bang, they're in. And they've got 30 seconds, sometimes a minute, depending on the system. And you can slam that code in. And yes, you can put it in twice because you're coming in from two different paths to Microsoft. And yes, you're in. Now, does that mean you're in there forever? Well, you're in there till somebody kicks you out, you log out, um, and then it'll require an access again. But by then, you could have made changes. You could resend the codes and redirect them to your phone. All kinds of things can happen once you're in. So It is still prudent to have it. So you've talked about... Um Duping the cell phone is in, you know, you've got the app on your phone, etc. But uh, there are different flavors of multi-factor. Yes. Um, let's talk about some of those differences, uh, email, yeah. SMS, etc. Yeah, so, so the, the most effective way of getting a two-factor code sent to you is with a push notification built into an application. Um, it doesn't even require you to enter a code. You can use the code mechanism, um, but it's being generated by an application that's locked to your phone and locked to the application you're using. There is SMS text that you can get codes sent to you, and I'm sure people get these every day. That is a much less effective way because it's pure text, and text and it, any of that text information can be scanned and harvested off your uh, your device. That's a that's an easier one to grab hold. Somebody walks up and looks over your shoulder, they can see the thing instead of you hitting yes and approving a connection. So um, app-based and push-based is definitely a more secure method for doing multi-factor. Uh, and we still believe that that's how everybody should do it and you should do it for every application that supports it. This is not just an email thing. This is your accounting system should support it. If it doesn't, you ought to be looking at a different avenue or a different method for authenticating. That brings me to my next point. Because I'm exhausted just thinking about all of the multi-factor. I, I, I open my... Uh, I have two different apps that I use for authentication. Only two? I only have two apps. However, each one of them have you know 20 different apps in there that I've got codes for. I'm tired. I'm tired of all the multi-factor. 
How do we help people avoid? Well, yeah. <laughs> how do... I understand. People do... are annoyed by it. And how do we just... help bring down the MFA fatigue? Right? You got to watch out for this because people will automatically just approve, approve, approve. So. I'm glad you brought that part up about this approve. Um, and I know I started it with the, you know, I approve this connection when you go to log into a system and it gives you this push and you're not putting in a code. And I think we would all agree that hitting the approve or the yes button is a heck of a lot easier than, okay, taking the code, transcribing into the system and hitting okay. Uh, but I have to tell you, at least thinking about the process of grabbing data out of here, putting it into your computer and, and approving it and authorizing it, albeit another three, five seconds, whatever it is, is, um, is a much more structured way of dealing with it. Uh, I can just, I, and I've talked to people about them doing this. And when I told them, oh, I'm sitting at the dinner table and you know, whoever I was talking to said, yeah, I just got a thing that said my multi-factor is trying to log in. I just hit OK. Well, you're sitting at the dinner table. Why would you hit OK? I, you know, I get these things all day long. And so I understand the fatigue thing. Um, I think the code base, because you have to actually be in front of the machine, you're not just hitting that. And you're hitting that, and now you've just let somebody into your system. That's likely what just happened. Somebody was trying to breach the system, and you gave them the approval to do it. So, yeah, I don't know how you say you have to be cautious, but yeah. you, you have to think twice about where you are, what you're doing, and is this, a, could I have really created this? I'm not logging in. You know, right. I was never logged out. Why, why would I approve? I've seen uh, some applications now using the trusted device methodology as well. So that you don't have to MFA every time because they know it's the same device on the same IP address or whatever, and so they're trusting that. Yeah, it's device. putting. It's actually putting a cookie on the machine and yeah. some or some tracker on the machine that says, "Oh, this is a known machine. It's tied to this user ID in our system." So it follows. Is that safe? It, it is safe. I still think the MFA is a proven technology. Uh, as opposed to the trusted device, but well, I'm saying I in do, conjunction, right? So you don't have to oh, MFA every time, every time, right? Uh, so you it's can, a big, you big can MFA saver. every fifth time or whatever if, if they're using that trusted device. Though. Yeah, I think it does help. I, I think it really does, and I, I think it's been such a trusted method that banks are still the ones that use that technology. I mean, if you look at some of the biggest banks, I mean, look at M and T. They're third biggest bank in the country now. They are now using that methodology. They're not using code-based. They're not using push-based. They're using that as their primary method. And then once every 20 times, they will send you a code and say, yeah, we don't recognize you logging in from this machine within this amount of time. Tell us which phone number to send it to. You send a phone number. So they're asking for both. I think uh, you know, even as important as MFA is, it's still only part of a comprehensive program, right? Nah. Got to have layers. Got to have layers. Yeah, no, it's it's one piece. You know, good good hygiene with respect to patching and having up to date software protecting your machine. Good password process. The you password know. hygiene is yeah, huge I mean, on this. You one. know, using the same password everywhere, and then your one password gets breached and hacked someplace, and then now they've got the keys to the kingdom everywhere, and they will find a way in. So, good, really good quality passwords everywhere. Yeah. Complex. All right. Multi-factor is not dead. MFA lives, <laughs> according to Bob. So uh, thanks for all that great information, Bob. Right. And uh, thank you for joining us on this episode of Kyber Clips. Hi. Thanks for joining us today on Kyber Clips. I uh, hope you enjoyed the information. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to our channel. You can comment below, or you can always reach out to us at sales at kybersecure.com. Hope you have a great day.